Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlett Damon. So today we're going to be painting a cute little lantern. This is an old English style lantern um, that I really, really like. I was extremely attracted to the idea of painting a whole series of these rustic romantic lanterns. But before we get into how I'm actually painting it, I'm going to jump back and put a little clip in here that shows you what I'm doing and the technique that I'm using in order to paint this little guy. So let's jump over to that now. So I want to stop the little tutorial for just a quick second and show you what I'm actually doing with the stones in the back because perhaps you might find this very interesting. So I'm going to rough out a few stones. Some bricks, they're just uh, rectangles, nothing, nothing complicated. And if you guys would like, um, go ahead and do the same thing. Now for our colors, for our colors, this, um, I'm going to put a little chart of this and show you what the colors are named. Um, I'll do that on a post on Patreon. I'm using a mix of these three colors. And this is also a not particularly fancy brush. Just lifting the alizarin crimson, the natural gray, and the Indian red, which makes a nice dark reddish brown. And I'm also adding a little bit of this. There's not a lot left. When I did this painting a few weeks ago, um, there's a lot more of this phalo uh, turquoise here. So I'm going to add some of that in too. And that's going to give us this darker purple color. Okay, so the next part is how we're actually, or how I'm painting it in the tutorial. I know it looks really quick, but I'm coming across the top. I'm coming across the top and I'm doing the shadow. So our light source. This is our little light bulb is here. Okay. So the undersides are going to be lighter, whereas the, the further parts are going to be dark. So I'm just coming along initially and putting in this dark line to where I think the darks are going to be. And it could even be here because say that's still going to be a little bit, that'll be in the dark too. It'll also be here. here, here, and here. Then I'm coming back with some water and I'm going over it and I'm softening this edge and pulling it down. We're able to move that color around and I can even come in later and lift out if I have too much water, lift it out and maybe add a little more color and let that bleed in. So that's what's happening in this tutorial. I'm putting in that color and then coming back, adding in some water. And just blending it out like so. Now for the underside, the the glow of this light is going to affect this side of of these stones, right? There might even be a little glow if it's a really strong. This one might reflect on this one a little bit, and maybe up here as well. It's reflecting back and forth, etc. So. I'm putting in that second line eventually I come back I think a little bit around the center and I add a little more and then let's clean off that brush again I want to again come in with a little bit of water and just soften that edge let that water move around let the yellow move up into the brown now here I'm exaggerating this so that you guys can really see what I'm talking about but essentially that's what's going on um, in this tutorial so I hope that was helpful. I realized that was a very small little bit of this whole piece, but um, it's so fast. I thought that maybe it would be good to take some time to go ahead and, and just look at one part of it. I think in the future I'm going to try to do this more often, so where I stop and put um, an actual technique into the full-blown tutorials, or I stop during the tutorials. I've done it in the past, but in the last maybe three or four months I haven't done it really at all. So I think going forward that might be more fun. If you guys are interested, let me know down below if it helps. 
if I stop the tutorial and give you a quick lesson on the side or or even when I'm actually recording the whole thing if I remember to do it while I'm recording the video let me know below because that really helps me so we're still working on the background we're still working on the uh, the bricks now you can kind of make it out that I had an initial layer, a line of bricks that I had already drawn in and with uh, sketched in. And then I went ahead and drew them with a little bit of detail, some with a little more detail and some with less. And this gives it kind of um, uh, a variety to the overall look. But then I thought, you know what, I think this the lantern would be better if it was in the middle of all the bricks, not just kind of coming off of the corner of some bricks. So something that uh, that I think is really useful, and I haven't done a tutorial specifically on it, but I think I should definitely do one in the future, is if you're looking to get your lines on your paper, if you're interested in doing your pre-marks and drawing out your picture, but you find that while you're drawing, uh, those pencil lines come through, you have a hard time putting on enough layers so the pencil lines are gone, or it's in a very... Um, uh, transparent spot in your picture where you can see the pencil lines through. If you don't like that, uh, something you can do instead is to use watercolor pencils. Um, if you make them really sharp and you carefully sketch it out like you would normally, as you're painting, the watercolor pencils are going to disappear. So you won't be left with this, with all of these lines that potentially could be very disrupting to your piece if you don't like them. That being said, a lot of people do like the pencil lines, and there's even a technique called line and wash. Typically that's done with a bit of ink, not just pencil, but it is definitely an art form in itself. So just because you have pencil lines on your piece and you think it doesn't look good, doesn't mean the rest of the world agrees with you. Um, a lot of people uh, really like the way it looks when the pencils are coming through, but I wanted to give you an option. So in this little thing, this little piece, on the right side you can see the pencil lines and on the left side you can't. Now I didn't use watercolor pencil for the left side, but I could have if I needed to pre-sketch out uh, those little bricks. And if I had pre-sketched out the bricks, they would have been a lot straighter. So as it is, it's like one of those old English houses where um, really old, like a six, seven hundred year old English house where the different parts of the house are leaning in different directions. Um, and then for the center, so if we get back to colors, for the center I used lemon yellow. Um, and for the iron, because of course this is a wrought iron lantern, I used a mixture of Indian red, natural gray, elizabeth, and crimson with a tiny touch of blue. The blue that I had on this mini palette, the one that's up there in the top left corner, is Phaleo Turquoise. Um, so I'm thinking that I'm using Phaleo Turquoise in here. It's not necessarily my first choice of blue. I probably, if I had the choice, if I had a different palette with me, I would have gone with um, something like indigo or even Payne's Gray to, to, to add in to get that darker uh, shadowy bits. But it works really well. The blues and the yellows go really well together. They're not complementary, but they're close enough um, that they do complement each other without being true complementary colors. Now another little thing here is such a tiny piece and I felt like because it's such a small piece I really wanted to concentrate on the details. So the little curls, the curly curly cues, <laughs> what are they called? The little curls I guess. Um, the way that it's supported onto the brick wall, the shadow that comes underneath it, this, this pushes a little lantern away from the wall. And even at this stage it still looks like um like it's all kind of one but you can see or you i can tell anyway how the more layers i'm putting it on once i flip it around the other way the more layers the more detail the more uh shadows i put in there the more that lantern is coming out from the wall it's it's kind of popping out and jumping at you it's becoming more 3d so I say this in all my tutorials, um, there's always a point where you could stop, and this is probably it. We could stop here, we could just let it be, and it would be perfect, or we could keep going. I, of course, chose to keep going. Once I get into a piece, it's really hard for me to stop. So I wanted the little bit of the glow from the inside to come up, and one of these lanterns, these, <laughs> these lanterns will have um, little spaces on the top and the bottom so that the air can move through it, because it's, it's 
it has a flame inside. So I wanted that light to be able to come up through the top and kind of flood around the top of the lantern. Although at this stage it's still pretty hard to see, but I think by the end I put a little more, a little more glow in there. And I'm also eventually going to put some glow onto the bricks in the background. And I'm going to keep working on those details. I want all of these little bits and pieces to stand out. I don't want to use black, but I am making dark colors by mixing darkish colors in order to make a blackish color so that uh, I'm able to have those darks without using a true black. So now we're going to put a little bit of glow on the background. There was a little scratch or a little bit of paint on the page initially and uh, I didn't really care at the beginning because I figured this piece is just going to be quick and simple and it's kind of a, a do it and toss it away or toss it into a book kind of thing. But by the time I was done I really like it. So I'm not so sure if I like the bit on the back. Um, I could definitely Photoshop that out. But it also could be that there's a there's a little crack in the wall. So I hope that you I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial and found it interesting and informative and that you learned something. Please let me know in the comments below if you did find this enjoyable. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit the bell. I'm putting up a lot of videos. In fact, at current, I've got about 12 weeks pre-recorded and ready to go. And I have a few things I'm gonna to have to push them around because I've got other things that are gonna come in, but uh, I'm pretty excited about what's coming. So don't forget to hit the bell so that you will be notified when I put something up. I'm Scarlett, have a great day. Toodaloo!